Hello and welcome back to Payday 2 101 with your host as always on the dry bread. Today we're going to be going over a very general enforcer build that I've made here. I wanted to point out at the beginning that this is for overkill difficulty and less, all of these general builds. These are all good to level up through and uh, wouldn't really recommend them too much on Death Wish. I'll be putting out specialty builds for those later. I'll be going over the loadout at the end of the video, but first we're on to the skills. First thing you need to know about this build is that I highly, highly recommend this for any new players who just want to level up quickly. This is a very powerful character build you can go, and it makes leveling up very quick and easy. Before we go over the actual Enforcer tree though, there are very few points in anything else, so we'll be going over them first, just because it's quick. Of course we need the Medic Bag to unlock Mastermind. We're just getting the basic stuff here of Aced Cable Guy, Endurance, and Fast Learner, and we're also picking up Aced Leadership, which will increase the stability of all weapons by 50% for you and the entire crew. This will come in handy because you'll be using shotguns a lot. Next on Technician, Aced Nerves of Steel, so we take less damage while interacting, and we also can use Steel Sight and Bleed Out. And we want Basic Sharpshooter, so we're more accurate with single shot weapons. This will apply to our shotguns. And lastly, Ghost. It is the general Ghost starter that I talked about in the last episode. Onto the Enforcer. We actually have a lot of stuff in Enforcer. There's a lot you want to take here. So first, we start by unlocking the ammunition bag. And we take Transporter Aced, of course, so we carry bags faster and throw them farther. We also have Oppressor Aced, so that our weapons are more threatening to enemies. This means that if you use high threat weapons, or loud weapons, it has a better chance of getting police officers to duck and cover and try and protect themselves rather than shoot back. Over here we have Die Hard, it lets us use our primary weapon and bleed out. You likely won't use that too often, but hey, if there's a sniper on you it's useful. But Aced is what you're really going for here. Armor recovery rate increased. That's a big deal. Underdog. Having an ace means that you receive 15% less damage and deal 15% more when surrounded by three or more enemies. That simply means if there's within a radius of you, if there are enough enemies around you. Because you're going to be using a shotgun, this will happen often, so the bonus is nice. Now this one. Necessary. Shotgun impact aced. Stability with shotguns is all around better, and much more damage with shotguns. Stun Resistance Aced. This is very good because flashbangs can really mess you up. Tough Guy Basic reduces camera shake. This is good because you will get shot a lot using shotguns. Shotgun CQB Aced, so you reload at double speed, and your steel sight you can go into much faster. The actual Aced bonus of this, of going into your steel sight, is debatable on whether that's worth it or not. That's one part where I might say, if you really need an extra few points somewhere, maybe you should take it out of that. Ammunition Specialist Aced. This one is an incredible ability. You have two ammo bags that have double the ammuni- or sorry, yeah, yeah, double the ammunition in them. No, it would be triple, right, because 200% additional. I can't math today. It's incredible. These almost never run out. Next we have Hard Boiled Basic. You only need basic with this. Increase your, sh your shotgun weapon accuracy when firing from the hip. I'll go into why it's so important later, and why you'd think, like, if you can go into steel sights so quickly, why wouldn't you just use that? I'll show you soon. We have fully loaded ace, this is important. You carry a bit more ammo, but people also drop 75% more. With this, and considering you're always up close fighting because your shotgun, you'll never run out of ammo. Your ammo bags are there for the rest of the crew. And we want basic and portable saw, so you can have the over 9,000 portable saw. This is a very useful utility item that I'll be going over in the loadout section. Now we have your bread and butter move, overkill. Every time you get a kill with a shotgun, or the saw, but it's mostly important for the shotgun, you get a 75% damage bonus for 5 seconds. If you keep killing people within those 5 seconds, you just keep resetting the timer back to 5 seconds. This really powers up your shotgun, and even in the picture there it shows the locomotive, which is what you'll be using with that. It is an incredible ability. If, say, three enemies run in, one's a taser, kill one of the normal enemies, and then your next shot, if it's a headshot, will instant kill the taser. It's very powerful, it lets you just completely sweep rooms. And this is actually why Hard, hard Boiled is so important, we've aced Iron Man. Basic Iron Man lets you wear the heaviest armor in the game, the improved combined tactical vest. Lots of armor on that. Aced 
When you melee enemy shields, they get knocked back from the sheer force. You also have run and shoot. While you're sprinting, you can fire from the hip. That extra accuracy from that, as well as from technician, added together with being able to sprint and fire in very heavy armor, which does help your stability, is an incredible bonus. It means your shotgun is actually quite accurate even when sprinting. You become quite the war machine with this, but let's go into the loadout so I can show you how to make the best of these skills. Here on the loadout, we're actually starting with the secondaries here because there's only one secondary you will need with this build, and that is the locomotive shotgun. Now, the game calls it a secondary, but really, with this build, this is your primary. Nine times out of ten, if you need to kill something, you're taking out the locomotive. I'll go over the mods here real quick. We're having the Shark Teeth Nozzle. You can get some really good builds out of it with the King's Compensator, actually, but I'll be explaining in the future, very soon, why I didn't decide to go with that. For Gadget, Military Laser Module. This, uh, it's not super necessary, you likely won't be using the flashlight or the laser, simply we do it because it adds stability. For grip, the rubber grip, pro grip would have no difference, you can pick either one. Magazine, you want the extended mag, two extra shells. For the sight, it's up to you, a lot of people don't even put a sight on it, however I would recommend putting the speculator sight on it. It may look a little bit weird at first, and it lets you see just slightly less when you're at hip firing, but it does add stability. Next for stock, I like to have the war-torn stock. It takes away that stability, but adds more accuracy. It is kind of important, though. A lot of people like to go with the police shorty stock. Again, I'll be explaining later why you don't want to do that. And lastly, the upper receiver, so that you have 10 shells total rather than 6 between your magazine and your upper receiver. The reason we actually go with these slightly odd weapons, or mod choices, and hurt our accuracy quite a bit is because 18 accuracy is the max total you can get on most weapons, and you actually can get 18 with a locomotive shotgun quite easily, but you don't want it. What you want is exactly 12. You see, someone very helpful in the community has actually done the math on how the shotgun works. When you fire it, the pellets go out, and if at least one pellet hits an enemy, it'll, they'll take the full damage of all of the pellets. And if the pellet happens to hit the head, then they take headshot damage instead. All you need is for one pellet to hit the dead center of the screen, and that would basically be maximum accuracy. What we found out is that if it goes above 12 accuracy on a shotgun, the cone of pellets gets tighter, but it can still randomly fire off into whatever direction, so it actually gets less chance of a pellet hitting the dead center. 12 is the magic number, and with this build, you come out with a lot of damage and exactly 12 accuracy, so the best chance of hitting the dead center of the screen with at least one pellet. It's true that with the King's Compensator, you could potentially have a much better chance of hitting someone from far away, but you're still dependent on that cone going in the right direction. If you want the best performance, I would say go with a shark uh, teeth nozzle and get 12 accuracy. Next, we're on to the primary weapons. I'm sure this doesn't surprise anyone, but the golden standard, the Loud Car 4. If you want to see what mods I put on it, I'll scroll through it quick, but I go into better detail on this over in the first general build in the playlist, which is in the description, with the Mastermind build. This really is a general purpose, everybody weapon. Very good. Again, it's overkill difficulty unless- I wouldn't really recommend this for Deathwish unless you were a technician, or at least had the headshot bonus from technician. But all around, it is a very good weapon, and it is a very good idea to carry an assault rifle as your main weapon as the- as a enforcer entirely because you're gonna want something that can hit snipers, or anything that's useful at long range, because the shotgun is only really mid-close range. Next we're on to the good old heavy AMR. This was the weapon of choice for a lot of people for a long time. It still is something I go back to every once in a while. It blows through ammo very quickly. I actually do like my funnel fun on it. The idea of taking this, though, with the Enforcer is that you already have your ammo bags, you have all your perks, to get ammo very quickly, so it kind of helps make up for the problem of the AMR of it runs out of ammo very fast. Especially if you have uh, the quad stack magazine, I believe it only has two or three clips worth of ammo total. 
However, with your extra ammo and picking up extra ammo and all of your overstuffed ammo bags, you shouldn't have too much of a problem keeping this thing stocked. And in that case, it might be a good idea to take. Second to last for loud primary weapons on the Enforcer, this one I would rarely take, but it's the Moscone 12 gauge shotgun with no mods on it. So it looks like this. This is only a two shot farmer shotgun. It, uh, does a hell of a lot of damage though, especially with the overkill bonus. This will mean that you'll be juggling two shotguns. And, um, you only really want to use this gun if you have the reload perk, which you will have in this build, because otherwise it's two shots before you have to reload and quite a slow reload. It can be very good, but it's spotty. It's more of a novelty than anything. And lastly, if you have the light machine gun gauge DLC, the RPK light machine gun or the Brenner 21. I'd recommend either one of those. Really, which one you pick entirely depends on what weapon modifications you have. I'm showing off the RPK light machine gun here because all of the mods I put on it are just DLC mods. They're the ones you're most likely to have. You don't need to get a random drop on it. So I have a competitor's compensator. No technical foregrip, it hurts the accuracy a little too much for my liking. Laser module and war torn stock. This ends up with a good amount of stability and accuracy. Keep in mind that this gun, the reason I didn't go higher in stability, considering stability is such a big deal for light machine guns, this machine gun can't go higher than 23 stability, and this brings it to 21 stability while still having very high accuracy. You can get basically the same stats with the Brenner, except debatably slightly better on the Brenner. However, it does require a lot of mods that are random drops and it's not the most stable thing in the world. Stability itself though, if you want to talk about stable in terms of stability, it's quite good. Simply, I'm just saying don't take the middle one, the uh, KSP light machine gun, entirely because that's more of a death wish thing, and you don't need, uh, you don't really need that on overkill and lower. You'll just blow through ammo too quickly, and light machine guns are quite hard on ammo bags. Here we are now starting up with the primaries on stealth. We've got the classic Car 4 stealth. Same one as I showed over in the Mastermind video. And again, it's up to you if you take the... Oh, where is it? There. If you, it's up to you if you take the short barrel or the stealth barrel. Depends a bit on your build, depends a bit on what you're going for, and I'd recommend making a Car 4 with both a short barrel and one with a stealth barrel, so you can pick whatever one better suits your occasion. Next for stealth, this one actually works outside of stealth a bit, but you mostly want this for stealth. It's the Moscone 12 gauge with both upgrades, making it pretty much a... Mm, wrong button? Pretty much a crazy powerful pistol almost. It is one of the most concealed primaries in the game, which makes it good for stealth, and it's good for plan B. It's of course not silent, it's incredibly loud. However, if you mess up, you get caught, it's not a bad gun to run around with. Because it has no end on the barrel, its spread for its pelts is incredibly huge. It's not any good more than 10 feet away, however it can hit a whole room. The spread on the pelts is so big. So it still does have very legitimate use. Next for stealth, uh, for stealth secondaries, we of course have the Gruber Kurtz stealth. Very, very concealable, very, very uh, good for overkill and less killing enemies in stealth. Again, it has almost no damage whatsoever, but it's enough that a headshot will kill them on overkill and lower difficulties. Next we have, for a stronger one, this will work on Death Wish. We of course have the Signature 40 Stealth, same one I showed in the previous video if you want to go look that up. Same thing I have to say about it this time. And yeah, Extended Magazine doesn't use up uh, concealability, it still seems weird to me. Uh, it still seems really weird. But the next one shouldn't surprise you at all. The Locomotive Shotgun, this time with the Silent Killer Suppressor. Yes, you can actually use it in stealth, and in fact, a lot of people like to use it regardless of whether they're an enforcer or not, because if you kill someone from close up, it launches the body. You can easily use that to actually move bodies to where you want them to land for when you answer the pager. It can also backfire if you shoot someone at the wrong angle and launch them into a populated room, so it does take some practice. However, the reason I consider this more of an enforcer thing is that if you mess up, if it goes loud, you still have a huge damage output from this gun. 
I mean, the, the silent killer suppressor hurts it, but between your overkill ability and all that stuff, it's really not that bad. You still have eight shots in it, because we are taking the magazine, but not the upper receiver. Straight grip helps a little bit. It's very concealable. No scope. And we have a tactical shorty on it. It does hurt stability quite a bit, but luckily we did take a lot of skills to help offset that. It's all around just still a very good weapon. And on melee, I usually don't go into melee because it's not very class specific, but always take the weapon butt with this build. The reason for that is it is the quickest melee attack not only to do, but to be able to shoot after it. And because you have the ability to melee a shield and cause them to stumble, you need to be able to recover and shoot them as fast as possible. So if you hit them with weapon butt of your locomotive, you can follow it up by immediately shooting them very, very easily. It's absolutely mandatory that you take the weapon butt if you're going to have Iron Man aced. And of course, take your ammo bags. You've got awesome ammo bags, the entire team will love you for it. That's it for this video on the General Enforcer build. Next we'll be moving on to a general build for the Technician. If you're interested in this series and would like to watch more, a link to the playlist will both be on screen as well as in the description. This series will be ever updating as new patches change old mechanics, so I'll keep you guys updated. If you're looking for some teammates to play the game with, why not join the Steam group linked in the description, and if you want to keep up with me, check out my Facebook fan page and my Twitter down in the description as well. Feel free to request I talk about anything in the game that you'd like if I haven't already made a video about it in the playlist, and I look forward to seeing everyone's feedback. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, have a nice day.